Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm redrawing my husband's art. So, I was trying to brainstorm a video idea, and I was telling some of my ideas to my husband Josh, and expressed that I wasn't sure if I wanted to do any of the ideas I had. Well then, he had the idea, what if I did a video redrawing some drawings that he drew? Now I want to make it very clear that my husband never really draws. Since meeting me, he has tried drawing a few pictures, but that's about it. So I found the idea of me redrawing pictures that he drew to be kind of interesting. I asked what medium he would prefer to use and he said color pencils. So I sorted through my color pencils and supplied him with a range of colors organized into groups to give him options and hopefully to make things easier for him. I also gave him scrap paper to sketch out his ideas and some cold pressed watercolor paper to use for his finished drawings. I wanted to give him mixed media paper, but I somehow didn't have any, so I went with this instead. And it's pretty similar, so it'll be okay. Also, I will be limiting myself to these supplies as well. I am only allowing myself to use supplies that I gave him. I did think about recording some footage of Josh drawing, but he was already a bit nervous since he was doing something new, and I didn't want to put any pressure on him. Uh, but I will show you his sketches. This is another reminder that Josh never draws. He's branching out and trying something new, so please be supportive. Anyways, these were his first sketches. He said that he felt like these were too basic, and that he also tried drawing an alien character. On the next sheet of paper, he tried drawing this guy and this girl, and also added some color. He was liking the direction he was going in, so he moved on to making the finished pictures. I'll show you this one of the girl first, since it's the one I'll be redrawing first. Instead of a three-quarter view like he originally thought about doing, he went with front view since it's easier. He gave the girl light green skin, dark green hair, and added in accents of purple to the sclera and shirt. Also, he told me that her mouth is supposed to be doing a kind of nervous bite sort of expression. He had to explain that one to me because I couldn't totally tell what the mouth was doing. So yeah, now I'm going to try to draw this in my style. Since this picture uses a lot of green, I'm going to sketch it out using a green erasable color pencil. I prefer to do my sketches with color pencil instead of graphite because the erasable color pencil will blend in nicely with the color pencil, whereas graphite can get kind of smudgy if you don't lighten it a lot before going in with the color pencil. I started by sketching out a circle. My camera was set to autofocus. Thankfully, I realized this and set it to manual focus. That way, it doesn't randomly blur out as I'm drawing. If my camera is set to autofocus, it will keep trying to focus on my hand as it's moving around. And that's not good, <laughs> uh, so I must have it set to manual focus. After the circle, I drew two guidelines, one to help me place the jawline, and one to help me define where the center point of the face is. Then I draw in the shape of the jaw. I draw lines off the side of the circle that go in a bit and extend a little past the guideline I drew. Then I make the lines curve and go towards the chin, where they will come to a soft rounded point to form the chin. A lot of times the ears end up being covered by the hair, but I still like to sketch them in. It helps the head feel more like a head to me. <laughs> Things always just feel off if I don't add the ears. Next, I decided to sketch in the neck and shoulders. For this picture, I'm going to try to stick more true to what my husband drew. So I'm going to stick with the same position and view that he drew his character in. However, for the second picture, I'll let myself do a little bit more of my own thing. A lot of times I like to get the facial features kind of in place and then I'll worry about the body uh, because sometimes I use the eye placement as a way for measuring the neck width. But this is a view I've drawn so many times at this point that I can kind of just feel it out. I did have to do some adjustments to make things more symmetrical. I always find that symmetry is the hardest part about front view and it's often why I prefer three quarter view. <laughs> I'd rather have the complicatedness of three quarter view instead of trying to make everything symmetrical. <laughs> Now on to the face. Like I mentioned, Josh said that this character was biting her lip in a kind of nervous way, so I'll be drawing the character with a nervous expression. Josh's character also seemed to kind of be looking off to the right, so I'll have mine do the same. I went with a more square eye shape since the eyes Josh drew weren't very round, uh, so I thought a more square shape would match the character a bit more. I was a bit confused on how to go about drawing this mouth pose, as it is one that I have never really drawn before, surprisingly. I had to take some reference pictures of myself to help me figure it out. <laughs> they look pretty funny, and I think I'm pleased with the result, and that it looks like what I was going for. Now I'm just getting some smaller details in place, like the details of the eyes, the hairline to help me place the hair, and the collar of her shirt. Josh's picture kind of had this swoopy shape, 
And I really wanted to base the hairstyle around this since it's one of its defining characteristics. I drew in the bangs in a very swoopy motion. Overall, the hair is in a short lob kind of hairstyle. And I had the outside edges flare out to kind of keep with the swoopy feel. I did also try adding a swoop to the back part of the hair. But I found that it kept looking a bit odd so I didn't keep it. So it has been a really long time since I last did a finished picture with only color pencils. I can't really remember the last time that I did, but I'm sure it's been years at this point. That being said, I was a bit nervous to color this picture because I do feel kind of rusty when it comes to working with this medium, but I was also excited since it had been so long. Once my sketch was done, I erased any parts that I didn't want and moved on to coloring. I thought about going around and darkening my sketch, but decided that would be better to do as I built up the colors with the pencils. I was scared that if I went in dark with like the line art with the color pencil, it would blend in and smudge with the lighter colors. So I felt like it'd be better to hold off on that. I'm starting by laying out a base color for the skin and hair. I kind of just slightly go over the surface of the paper. That is something I feel like I could have done more with this picture. I feel like I could have spent more time laying down the colors lightly for blending purposes. A lot of times if you take the time to lay down the colors and build them up a bit before going into burnishing, your blending result will be better. Like I said, I'm not an expert of color pencils. <laughs> this is all just based on my own personal experience. And actually, as I'm watching the footage back, I guess I did an okay job building up the colors. I just feel like I could have done it maybe a little bit more. But as you see, I'm kind of lightly going in with the darker greens to build up the shadows and get an idea of their placement. Also, the color pencil brand I'm using is mostly Prismacolor. I did have a few pencils from different brands thrown in, but not very many. I wanted to try to give Josh all the same brand of pencils so that they would all behave in the same way. I didn't want some pencils to have really soft pigment and others to have harder pigment, although he probably wouldn't really have noticed. <laughs> when I was first getting into art, I never really noticed much of a difference between color pencil brands. When he saw all the colors I laid out for him, he was taken aback a bit. I proceeded to explain that I didn't want to limit his options and I wanted to give him different options like more yellowy greens and more bluey greens and so on. But he probably would have been happy with just a few colors. <laughs> I may have overwhelmed him a bit. But yeah, I didn't want to limit the color options and I also wanted to give me more color options since I'm only letting myself use what I gave him. <laughs> As you can see, I've moved on to the hair. I decided to start by establishing the darkest values. A lot of times if you're working on pictures with color pencil, you do want to work light to dark. But I find that if I don't get the darkest values in place early on, my whole picture will end up looking washed out. Or once I do eventually get the darkest values in place, I have to readjust the colors so that they don't look so light next to the darkest values. This is why I'm establishing the darkest values early on. As I'm coloring the hair, I'm using a variety of greens for the blending. I think I used four to five different shades of green. Once I kind of build up the different colors, I proceeded to burnish them. If you don't know, burnishing is where you press harder on the pencils so that you get the pigment into the texture of the paper and reduce the amount of texture and white specks. It also makes the color look very vibrant because you're laying down a lot of pigment onto the paper. I try to hold off burnishing with the pencils until I have built things up a bit or I'm confident in the color placement. A lot of times once you burnish, it is hard to add pencils on top since you have worked the pencil into the paper so much. You still kind of can, but it's not the greatest. It's better to get a feel for the colors and build them up a bit instead of going straight into burnishing. And like I said, you'll probably get a better blending result. When I learned about burnishing when I was young, I would jump straight into doing it instead of building up the colors. And this often resulted in a not as smooth blend or the colors just didn't feel mixed together. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is all just my own personal experience. You can find what feels and works best for you. For most of the hair, I'm using more bluey greens so that it contrasts with the more yellowy green of the skin. But to make the highlights kind of pop and feel warm, I did add some of the yellowy green to the hair. I had a lot of footage for the hair, so I didn't film all of it. Instead, we're going to move on to the skin. But before rendering the skin more, I wanted to get the facial features darkened so that way they don't disappear into the skin. When I'm working on the finer details like the eyebrows, eyes, or outlines, I make sure to keep the pencils really sharp. I'll keep putting the pencil into my sharpener to make it come to a point, or I'll keep rotating my pencil so I'm using the sharper side as I wear down one side. 
This makes it easier to get darker, clean lines. However, when I'm shading, I don't mind if the tip gets really round. I often find for shading, a rounder tip is easier to work with because it's just a little smoother and softer and it doesn't have as much of an edge. Uh, so it can feel easier to get a more even laid down of color. But for details and lines, I like the pencil to be super sharp. Like I did with the hair, I added a more yellow green to the lighter part of the eyes. When I'm shading, I often like to make the shadows move to a cooler hue and the highlights move to a warmer hue. By working with slightly more different hues, it makes the coloring look more interesting than it all being the same hue. For the skin, I'm once again doing the burnishing process like I did for the hair. Also, while working on this, I was reminded as to why I haven't made a finished picture with color pencils in a long time. And it's because they really hurt my wrist and arm after a while. It's not too bad when I'm coloring lightly, but when I'm working the pigment into the paper, it is very tiring and starts to hurt. I was starting to wonder if I'd be able to handle working on another picture. Thankfully, I allotted two days for filming this video, so I was able to take a break between the two pictures. And the break was very much needed. <laughs> there was no way I could do both of these pictures in one day. Also, you might see it sometimes in the footage. I'll use a white pencil to blend out the colors and burnish them. By using the white, I can force the pigment that I laid down into the crevices of the paper and flatten out the texture of the paper. I don't always use white because it can change the way your colors look, but it works very nicely for lighter colors like the light yellow green of the skin. It was also a way for me to add a lighter color to the forehead and cheeks to make them look a little bit more highlighted. Lastly was the sweater, and at this point my arm was killing me and I wanted to be done. So I'm going to be honest, I got a bit lazy with it and I didn't lay down the colors as smoothly as I could. I kind of rushed things. There was a lot of footage for this and it's not very interesting, so I'm not going to make you watch it all. But once the sweater was finished, the picture was done and here it is. We will compare it to Josh's picture later and Josh will also react to my drawing. But for now, I need to redraw his second drawing and here it is. It is a boy character this time and he has blue skin, orange hair, and a short orange beard. I've never really drawn characters with beards, so this will be interesting. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, for this picture, I'm going to let myself change things up a little bit. Instead of a front facing view, I'm going to draw the character in three quarter view. I wanted to do this to better show off the beard and the strong facial structure I plan to give this character. When Josh finished drawing this character, he said something along the lines that the character looked very mean or like a bully jock kind of character. So that's the kind of personality I was trying to express in this drawing. Once again, the mouth was kind of an interesting one to draw. It was kind of a smirk, calf smile sort of thing. It's not a pose I've drawn super often, but it wasn't too tricky, thankfully. I found the mouth in the other picture to be a little bit more confusing. Right now I'm lightly sketching out the beard, but you can hardly see it, so I'll talk more about that later. My original idea for the shoulders was to have them be kind of viewed from above, and they are turning. I felt like this would make things interesting, however, I was having a hard time with the execution. I felt like they just kept looking wonky, so I erased all of that and went with a more simple position instead. I wanted his shoulders to be kind of back and up like he was standing really confidently. Uh, but looking back at the footage, I actually feel like the shoulders that were viewed from above and turned looked pretty okay. I think I was kind of overthinking things in the moment. I tend to second guess myself a lot more with traditional art than digital art because with digital, I can pretty easily change things later. However, for traditional, it's much harder, so I'm more picky and often a bit more timid with my choices. Uh, plus I can't flip my canvas like I kind of can by like taking pictures or like turning my sketch to the light. Uh, but it's not really as effective as when I flip my canvas on the computer. So I can't just easily check for mistakes like I do on the computer. And because of that, I'm like, what if there's a mistake and I'm not seeing it? <laughs> so I become more timid. Another new thing this character made me draw is his hairstyle. I rarely draw hair in this kind of combed straight up kind of style. So it was really interesting trying to figure it out. Right now I'm going in more lightly with my main orange color and kind of refining the shape of the hair a bit while filling in the colors. At this point you can actually kind of see what I'm doing for the beard so I can talk about it. <laughs> I decided to have the beard or scruff kind of meet up with the hair along the sideburns. When studying facial hair, I noticed that it often does this. 
For the shape of the beard, there isn't too much rhyme or reason for it. I kind of just drew sporadic pointy shapes along the inner and outer edge of the line for the chin. I tried not to think about it too much because I knew if I did, I'd probably end up making things too uniform and I wanted it to feel kind of more random. I was debating with going something kind of like how Josh drew, where it's a little bit more sketchy and you see the individual lines for the scruff. However, I knew that with the blue skin, I'd have a hard time doing a sketch scruff look because the orange and blue will not mix nicely and I'd have to draw around each individual little sketch line and that sounded really tedious. So I decided to keep things a bit more stylistic and separated the colors a bit more. Also, something I've kind of been wanting to talk about with all of you, but I haven't gotten much of a chance to, is that I've been playing Pikmin 4 and it's really fun. Uh, but also really stressful at times. <laughs> I don't know, Pikmin is such a weird game to play sometimes. Like sometimes it can feel so chill and you're just collecting stuff with your Pikmin. But then other times the game scares you super bad and then tons of your Pikmin die and you're super sad. I usually use the time travel feature when this happens. <laughs> it was funny because Josh was playing a game called Dead by Daylight and I was playing on my Switch next to him. And the game he was playing is kind of a scary horror game, but even though he was the one playing the scary game, I was the one acting scared and squealing because something was chasing me and my Pikmin. <laughs> he was like, am I the one playing the horror game or are you? <laughs> I replied with, I think I am. <laughs> but yeah, Pikmin is a really good game and I'm enjoying it. The Pikmin are so cute. I've beaten the main quest and am now doing the post game stuff. I mentioned that for the first picture, I kind of wished I would have built up the different colors a little more. So for this picture, I really tried to take my time and lay down the different colors to hopefully help me get a good blend. For the hair, I really wanted it to fade from a deeper red to orange and then to yellow. Once I was happy with that, I went in with the colors some more, but this time I was applying more pressure. And I do feel like the result is pretty smooth. I'm really happy with how the hair shading turned out. Right now, I was focusing more on the gradient and not so much on the texture of the hair, but I will try to add more texture later in the process. I don't remember if I recorded that part, so sorry if you don't see that. <laughs> I also do apologize that for a lot of this, I'm not fully showing the footage. I'll kind of talk a little bit more about why in a bit. Oh, and you may notice a paintbrush come into the footage sometimes. I use that to brush away the pigment particles that come off the pencil. I use the brush to brush them away because if I use my hand sometimes the little particles end up drawing on the paper and you can see the smudge and it's really annoying when they do that. <laughs> uh, so I found a paintbrush to get all the little particles away. Oh wow, okay, Um. so yeah, last time I got really lazy with the shirt, but this time I did not want to be lazy and decided to take my time a bit more, but I knew that would be a lot of footage, so I only filmed the last portion of the shirt. That's another thing about color pencils, they are very time consuming. I probably would have had these done in like half the time if I was using markers. You just don't have to spend as much time building up the colors. But that being said, I did like the fact that I could kind of relax and take my time. With so many other mediums like watercolor, acrylic, and especially markers, you kind of have a timer because a lot of times you have to work before the medium dries. Like for markers, I'm often trying to go really fast and I'm consistently switching between the markers I'm blending with at a pretty fast pace because if I don't go fast, I won't get a smooth blend. But with this, there wasn't too much pressure. It was pretty chill, you know, except for the fact that my arm was dying. <laughs> oh, also another note about the shirt. Yes, the character has blue skin and is wearing a blue shirt with a yellow collar. I originally thought the character was wearing a necklace of some sort, but Josh confirmed that it is a shirt. I did try to make the shirt a bit of a darker blue, but sadly, it was pretty close to the skin tone. I was anticipating the skin being a little bit lighter, but the lightest blue I had still got surprisingly dark. One thing I did keep running into, and you can't really see it much in the footage, is that sometimes when I was working on the skin, some little orange particles would be in the area and they would mix with the blue pencil and make a not very appealing brown smudge. And I would panic every time it happened. <laughs> Thankfully for many of them, I was able to use my electric eraser to get rid of them and then I would refill in the spot with blue. Also, I was so happy when I found my electric eraser. I had no idea where I was and I kind of forgot about it. But then when I was digging through all my colored pencils, I found it among them. And I was like, whoa, that's where that was. I love this thing. <laughs> and yeah, it really came in handy. 
If you don't have an electric eraser, I highly recommend getting one because they are fantastic. You can basically erase almost anything and also erase super small details. Uh, the one I have is by Ohuhu, um, but I'm sure a lot of different other brands would work as well. For the eyes in Josh's picture, he had the upper eyelash line be orange and the lower one be blue. I liked this detail and wanted to keep it. But I did have to make the upper lashes go more towards a deep red and even used a bit of black to help them stand out. Like I said, the skin got much darker than I was anticipating, but the orange eyes do really pop against the blue. Okay, so here's the finished drawing. Now that both pictures are done, I'll go get my husband and we can show him my interpretations of his art. I am very interested to see his reaction. <laughs> so now I have Josh here with me. Hello. And he's going to react to the pictures, so I will grab them. Should be exciting. Mm-hmm. I arranged them in order, so you'll just have to flip through them here. Uh, so here's yours. Okay. And I'm going to flip this and see. Wow! It's incredible. <laughs> I love the color. Yeah. <laughs> it really fits very well with actually what I had. Yeah, the color choices were all really good. They all vibe pretty well. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> No, for the blue man. He was interesting. Mm hmm I'm excited. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> That's really good. So he even kind of got like the fire in his eyes, you can see. It is a lot of blue. I apologize for giving you so much blue to work with. It was really fun working with all the blue. Uh, the orange really pops with all the blue. Wow, those are super. This is way better than what I did. Well, yours were very good inspiration, and it was only like your second time drawing. Well, thank you. Glad I could inspire. This was definitely a lot of fun and pushed me much more out of my comfort zone than I thought it would. I had to draw some very different looking characters and use a medium that I haven't used in a long time. I was expecting this to be kind of an easy video, but it was surprisingly challenging. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Josh for doing this with me. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye.